Hey guys, Zero Magnamex here. Uh, doing something a little bit different today. Normally you're used to Yu-Gi-Oh! Which is my main card game. No, I'm not quitting. But I've also played this game almost as long as I've played Yu-Gi-Oh! So, I'm going to feature it. This is a Magic the Gathering crossover. I have three deck profiles here. The first is my girlfriend's deck. Okay, this is what is called Infect. Um, for those who don't know how to play, please don't question me too much. Uh, try to look at tutorials online. Okay, first up, for those who do play Magic the Gathering, three Nighthawk. You mean four? Four. Sorry. Four of this guy. Uh, Plague Stinger. Pretty nice. We don't have the big dragon for those who do play this game and know how it works. So, you know, don't ask. If you guys want to do some trades for Yu-Gi-Oh! with MTG, keep in mind I don't rank MTG as highly as I do Yu-Gi-Oh! But I will do a crossover trade. Okay, three Ichua Rats. The point of this deck is not to hit your opponent's life total, it's to hit them with a new concept in the game called Poison Counters. Poison Counters essentially you need 10 of them regardless of your opponent's life total to win. And any creature with Infect deals Poison Counters. So if this gets through to your opponent directly, um, they take an automatic 2 Poison Counters so you need 8 more to win. So it kind of limits it. Uh, you start out in MTG with 20 life. Uh, secondly, please note that uh, this all attacks in MTG unless you declare what is called blocking or direct attacks. So that's the difference between it and Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, so this guy's called Contagious Nim. Okay, four Tainted Strikes. It gives a creature plus one plus zero an infect, so she can use that on her Nighthawks. Okay, two sign in blood. A uh, target player, that means you're your opponent, loses two life and draws two cards. So you can either use it to draw or lower your opponent's life total and win. But it's mostly in this deck to draw. And finally, two Doom Blades. Uh, think of them like Fissure and other stuff. They destroy uh, target non black creatures. As long as it's not a black creature card itself, it pops it. So it's not bad, it costs two. Okay, next up, we have three Invisimancers. These guys make creatures unblockable, which unblockable creatures suck, and he himself is unblockable. So, he's really good, especially in this kind of deck. A Thumbing Bird, which has flying and it has proliferate, which doubles counters on the field of her two, or not doubles counters, but gives an extra counter for anything that has a counter, so it'll up poison counters and stuff like that. Okay, these also are draw cards, but they proliferate on them. They're called Steady Progress. So, they put more counters, and uh, the player can distribute as willingly as they want as many counters as the, he or she wants, where they want. Well, one counter, but wherever they want. Okay. These guys, they're simple too. One ones with infect, and whenever they die, they give minus one, minus one to a creature. These guys here, um, whenever these guys enter the battlefield, bring a creature with infect from your graveyard back to your hand. Okay, then these three, are the last three, they're singles. This is Iron Claw Murr. Uh, grafted exoskeleton in this one. I can't read it upside down, my bad. Conjugation collapse or something like that. Anyways, this has proliferate. She can tap in and just keep getting counters. So if she deals like enough poison counters, this can keep increasing them. And whenever it comes into play, you can give a creature minus one, minus one. So it's not bad. It sits there and just goes to town. Uh, and then the mana for this are simply, I think, 12 swamps and 8 island. So, for MTG players, you'll know what that means. For those who don't, uh, each card in the game requires a different color to cast, like black needs black, blue needs blue, etc, etc. So, 
you know, you need a good balance if you're using different colors in a deck. Some people may choose monocolored decks. Um, alright, now the next two are my two decks. So, here we go. This is my sideboard. Don't worry about it. It's just... Okay, this is blue-white. It's not the best blue-white deck in the game. Please note that. There are amazing blue-white decks that are topping out. This is not it. I'm not paying $80 per card for the top eight or, or top four winner decks. That's the thing I like about Magic over Yu-Gi-Oh! In that aspect, you can use cheaper decks and still have really fun competitive play. Uh, these guys are Sarah Angels. They're my flyers of this deck. Flying in the game gets over non-flying creatures, so you can make them more direct attacks. Uh, two of these drakes, I'm not sure if I like them or not, but when they pop, it gives me a draw, and they're two fours. Uh, I really want to try and one four, but I'm only going to run three Gomazoas. Think of Neospatian, Grandmul, Raza, and the Forceful Sentry all mixed together. That's what this guy does. Whenever it blo um, blocks, you can tap it, return it and the attacking creature back to the deck and shuffle the decks. So you can get rid of those really big nasty creatures that are out there. So he's really nice. It's one of my favorite cards, actually. Okay. Aether Adapt, whenever they come into play, return target creature to its owner's hand. They're helpful. Especially getting around things like Nighthawk. Okay, these guys, when they come into play, I can uh, look at the top two cards and put one of them on the bottom of the deck and one into the hand. So they're not bad. They're draw and cycling. That is the um, Seagate Oracle. Okay, see beyond. These are draw cards. Sorry about that. People are playing humans versus zombies. Uh, campus-wide tag event. If you want more info on that, go to my girlfriend's channel. I'll link it or something. Okay, anyway. See beyond. These are just draw engines. Draw two cards and shuffle a card from your hand into the deck. Think kind of like Graceful Charity. Uh, that's the other thing. MTG has 60 card decks and has a lot more draw power. So, And then this one's kind of expensive. You look at the top four and uh, put them back in any order you wish and then you draw two or you can put them on the bottom You can put all four cards on the bottom of your deck if you don't like your draws uh, You can rearrange them. Basically. It's a souped up pot of duality and That's kind of what I meant whenever I said I don't like duality and Yu-Gi-Oh that much because MTG has better cards that have been doing it just as long if not longer so well a lot longer and that costs four mana to play. And it's a that's a con, and it's 25 cents. Okay, Journey to Nowhere. These are beautiful cards. They basically are like an equip card that just removes from play any creature. So they're nice. So I just play it and then remove from play whatever creatures on the battlefield that I want. Uh, Magic also has no limit on cards. There's no setting cards. Like I said, look it up, Yu-Gi-Oh players. I like it as a secondary card game, personally. It's better than a lot of other ones. Condemn, if a card attacks, you return it back to the owner's hand, and then they gain life equal to its toughness. Uh, so, it's pretty nice. It's a balanced card. Think like compulsory device. Okay, cancel. Counter target spell. These are like negates. So, they s play... Any card you play in Magic the Gathering is called a spell. So whatever they play, you can counter it with this for three. And it instantly is negated and put in the graveyard. Okay, two to prive. Counter target spell, but you have to return a land you control to your owner's hand. So they're pretty nice. I need to get a few more of those. Ah, uh, more here. Turn asides. They're also counter spells. They counter a spell that can targets a permanent. You control permanents or anything that stay in play. Okay, negate counter target non-creature spell. So like if they use a burn card or or another counter spell, this takes them out. Okay. Mana leak. I need to get myself more of these again. These are like 25 cent cards, guys. Okay, counter target spell. It's controller, unless it's controller pays three. These are really good. I either get them to tap out so they can't play more or stop something. Uh, this is kind of the more expensive card in the game. Uh, counter target spell costs four and then you get to see your opponent's hand. So it's like a negate and a surge. And then 
my deck runs like so many planes and island I think it's more island and then I run these which are just search cards so you can tap them search a land from your uh, deck put it into play tapped so I mean, tap means you can't use it the turn that you use it but it helps whenever you need that different color okay uh, how are we for time just show me or 13 minutes or we have 13 we have 10 minutes or at 10 okay well I guess we have enough time for this last deck this is my new favorite deck I'm just saying like I love how it works and I'm going to probably improve upon it like these are illegal for the format okay first up for lightning bolts how they have attack and toughness and whatever you pay one it's an instant which means you can use it from all instants you can use from your hand on your opponent's turn that's the difference there's no setting in this game like trap cards instants are kind of like traps and quick plays all in one which is why counter spelling is mean because you're negating stuff and activating during your opponent's turn but if you're tapped out you can't play them so in that regard you go you have like sometimes free cards and magic you have to pay for everything so um well mostly everything there are some free creatures this you tap one it's an instant. It deals three damage to target creature or player. So, like here, as an example, Nighthawk has three toughness. That's how they take damage by their defense, if you will. So, Lightning Bolt instantly kills this guy. Okay. Fireball. These are an amazing card, especially for this deck, and I'll explain why. Uh, this deck can pump out what is called infinite mana. All right. Meaning I can make a combo where I can put infinite mana in my mana pool. The way this deck is set up. Meaning if I throw this down, I instantly will win based on damage. Unless it can counter it or redirect the damage or other things like that. It, it basically is infinite damage. Magic does have some infinite combos, which is nice. Uh, but you tap one red and X and it deals X damage to any number of creatures and players. But you've got to pay an additional one for each target beyond the first. So if I lay down fireball. And let's say I paid one red and seven colorless. Okay. There's a creature with two on the field. All right. So I can deal two damage to that creature. So that would be three mana. And, out of, and then I could deal three to my opponent. Is how it works. Because you have to pay for additional targets after the first. So, but if you're just pouring it into one target, I could deal that seven damage to my opponent if I wanted to. It depends on the circumstance, really. Okay. Mer Smiths. They are pretty nice. Uh, they cost two and they come into play. If you play what is called an artifact spell, you get to put a 1-1 one, one Mer token into play. This deck swarms with that. It's okay. Three of these, or four of these, sorry, Origin Spell Bombs. They also give me Mer tokens and draw power if I'm willing to sacrifice them. And they, they're cheap, they only cost one. So with three mana out, I can pop a bomb, get a free token, and get a free draw. Okay, these guys, Gold Mer, they cost two for one ones. And then if I tap them, I can add mana to my mana pool of white. And then the same with these guys for uh, Silver Mer. Because it's a blue-white deck, I'm using the blue-white Mers. Or, sorry, red-white. Good question, why is there blue in my deck? Oh, well. My friend constructed the deck for me for a trade. Alright, these guys right here will produce the infinite combo. Alright, one minute. Okay, um... These are Mer Galvanizers and Palladium Mers. Uh, I'm going to have to speak through there because we have a minute left. We have four Prolific Prisms. They alternate mana colors. These guys give me mana for six. They give me three mana and I can pop them to draw. He's the big beat stick of the deck. Mer Battle Sphere, pretty nice for what he does. I can't really explain if you want to know PM me. And then all is dust. Uh, every player sacrifices all num or colorless permanents. And then that's just another land that turns into a creature. Alright, well, that's my decks. Let me know what you think. PM me if you got questions and Zero Magnum Mask. 